that you want to be within a certain percentage of the optimum solution. So you can say, as long as I'm within 10% of the optimum value, I'm good. Or as long as I'm within 1% of the optimum value, I'm good. Be careful with this one, um, because it might be hard for it to, to know that it's within that optimum solution. Usually your time is going to be a, a good mechanism, because you know how long it takes to wait for 300 seconds. You don't know how long time it will take to get 5% or 10% of the optimal solution. It's indeterminate. The computer can't even predict how long it will be for that. Okay. So this is, this is nice to get a good value. You can always look at your solution and say, that doesn't look like it's done a good job. I'm going to run it longer. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, um, so when you look at your solution that you turned in for today, you can say, oh wow, I'm within you know, two people of every congressional district being the same size. That's pretty stinking close. That's good enough. Or you can say, I'm within 150,000 people from the biggest congressional district and the smallest congressional district. That's not very close. Right? And I need to run it longer. Right, so you you now are bringing back intelligence into this solution. You have to evaluate: is this a good solution or is it not a good solution? All the computer can say is this is the best solution I can find so far. It's not telling you it is the optimal solution. It's only telling you so far from the values I've looked at, this is the best thing I've found. If you want, I can keep looking. I don't know how long it'll take me. It could take a really really long time. And so you want to make sure that you only let it go as long as you need to get your good enough solution um, to, to solve the problem at hand. All right? So this is kind of weird because we're going from this is guaranteed the optimal solution to uh, this was a pretty good solution. Right? And now you have to understand uh, the limitations of the solver that you're putting in front of it, you. All right. So, in your problem for the project today, you saw one of the most common ways that we use uh, binary values. So, let me turn on the lights temporarily here, and then we'll open our book and do some examples together. For your project, you had these counties and you allocated them to districts. So you might have 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, or you might have 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, or whatever the case is for any particular county to allocate it to one of these congressional districts here. Then what you did is you didn't stop there because you, you had another row that represented the population of that county and you multiply this population times each one of these values that you did. Binary numbers are, the, are my favorite numbers to multiply. Right? Because anything times zero is zero. And anything times one is whatever you start with. Right? So I don't even have to engage my mind to figure out how to do binary multiplication. All right? So the, the nice thing about doing this then is we can use these binary numbers to sometimes use a value and sometimes not use a value by just multiplying that value times that binary number. Uh, and so this, this binary number can be used as more than just a zero or one. It can be sometimes use this value and sometimes ignore this value by multiplying this value by the 0 or 1, depending upon whether you want to use it or not. All right? This is going to be a trick that we utilize really frequently with our integer problems. All right, let's, let's see an, an example here. Uh, if you open your books, uh, let's do, I think it's problem 7. Uh, 10 is what I wanted to do. Yes, I want to do 710. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, what are you doing? All right. 
Oh, just in case you don't know, why don't I run through the problem I had uh, on the board really quickly, open solver. here need to be less than or equal to those constants. What's the new constraint? How do we specify an integer? We highlight those cells and we select this int value right here. That stands for integer. I don't have to fill in this box. In fact, look, I can't even click it. It's been disabled here. What I'm doing here is I'm saying that these two variables have to be integers. Now it's really important when you add this constraint, you can't just put it on any old box in your Excel file. It will complain if you try to highlight something that's not a variable cell. Because that doesn't make any sense. How is it supposed to constrain, constrain something that is not able to change? Alright. Now look at how can you, let me pull that up. Look at what it's done to those integer values. It's marked them with an I. That's how you know that those values have to be integer. There we go. It solved the problem just like we said it would. All right. Uh, problem 7, 10. What are we trying to do here? Trying to locate new uh, what is it, police stations. So, we'll, um, how do we know what? So, what's our objective? Minimum number of locations. Okay. So, um, I'll just write that down here. Number of locations. Okay, and so. What are the possible locations? It's location A through G, right? Those are the possible locations, right? So what are the possible values that we can have for these? Um, 
No, no, because we're not going to repeat having location A seven times, right? Yeah, Nick. Would it be binary? Why would it be binary? Because there might not be a need for one of those uh, substations. Okay, so we're either going to have a station or we're not going to have a station. That's what we're trying to ask here, is do we put a station in location A, B, C, D, E, F, and or in G? So let's do that first. Let's say that um, our objective cell, we don't know how yet, is going to be this. We want to minimize the number of stations. And our variable cells are these. And what we know is that we want to make those values be binary because we either want to allocate a station there or we don't want to allocate a station there. That's the only one of two choices that, that we can make. So I'll temporarily put that like that. What, what should go in here? The number of locations. How do we know how many locations there are? Can you just sum up the binary ones? Yeah, if we just add up all those binary values, we know how many, because if it's one there, it'll be a one. If there's not one there, it'll be a zero. And so now we know how many locations there are. So, what are the constraints for this problem? What needs to be true when we put out all of our locations? Regardless if it's a um, best solution or not, what has to be true for it to be considered a solution, a potential solution? It has to cover all seven districts. Yeah, so we've got these different seven districts. We want to make sure that the police station, the police from that station can get to each of those seven locations, right? So we can say covers uh, district one. Covers district uh, two. District three covers or oh. now how do we tell let's start with <coughs> this one right how do we know if district one has been covered if there's a one in the binary column for a b c or g Okay, so if we allocate one for A, or we allocate one for B, C, or G, we have got it covered. So how can we turn that into an equation? <clears throat> or in inequality? You would add up the binaries, and if it's greater than or equal to one? Which binaries? Of the A for G location? Not all of them. Right, because some of them are the ones that have it. Yeah. Right, we only want to add the ones that actually cover that. So we want the A one, so that's B one. We want B two, B three, and B seven. Right, those are the four locations that cover district number one. And what do we want to be true about that again? Greater than zero. Greater than zero. But when since we have e greater than equals, we don't have okay. greater than. Yeah. It should be greater than or equal to one. One. Okay. So I'll just put a one here. How about covering district two? How do we cover district two? B. B. Or D. Or D. Okay, and that also has to be a 1, right? How about District 3? C and D? C and E. C and E, so that's 3 and 5. How about District 4? B, E, and F. B, E, yeah. and F. How 
Public District 5. A, B, C, D, F, and G. Everything except for E? Yeah. Well, then I'm just going to go, I'm going to cheat because I'm. Everything except F? E. E? Yeah. Okay, <coughs> that's everything except E. Right? How about six? <laughs> uh, e through G. Okay, so that's B5, B6, and B7. Oh. And seven? A, B, and G. Okay. So do you see what we did there? We added up each thing and said those four cover District 1. These two cover District 2. These two cover District 3. These three cover District 4. These six cover District 5. These three cover District 6. And these three cover District 7. So now we can add to our model the constraint that all of those coverages must be at least one. All right. And now we can solve this. There we go. And we can solve it with only two stations, one at B and one at E. So the, and then you can manually do it. If we have B, we've covered 1, 2, 5, and 7. So that means we just have 3, 4, and 6 to go. And that's exactly what E gives us, 3, 4, and 6. But you can, you can do interesting things. Like you can say, oh, um, such and such a neighborhood is really crime-ridden. Um, and uh, so we need to have two police stations at that district, All right? Well, fine. We can do that now by doing B, C, and E instead. Or maybe it's not crime, and maybe it's, you know, City Hall. We can't afford to have any crime there, you know. We have to have good looks for, for the, the TV or whatever, case, right? So you can you can change how this works accordingly. All right. So these are binary numbers. We can't build half of a police station. We build it or we don't. Okay. Let's quickly flip over to problem number fourteen. Let's think about how this works here. What are we trying to do in problem number 14? What's the goal of, of this problem here? Trying to figure out which plants to modernize to meet projected manufacturing needs. Okay. Minimize the total cost. Okay, so minimize cost while modernizing plants, right? So what 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 are going to be our constraints in in this problem? What do we what do we need to make sure we do? You need to have total capacity for nine hundred thousand engine blocks and nine hundred thousand transmissions. Okay, so we need to make sure that when we do, that we have enough capacity with our new things. So, what I would normally do here, uh, let's, um, is I would make, this is similar to your final project where you have your, your data here, and the first one is your cost, 
Your next one is number of engine blocks. And your next one is number of transmissions. And just take that data. And then this is just the question, should we modernize? So we, we have all this data, right? 25, 25, 35, 35, 40, 20. 500, 800, 400, 900, 200, and so on. Do we have this value right here? No. No, so what does that mean that has to be? That, that is our decision variable. We're trying to decide whether to do it. So our, our variables are whether or not to modernize. And what type of variable should they be? Binary. Again, it's binary. We either do or we don't modernize it. Okay. Let me fill this out real quick here. Transmissions, 300, oops, 400, 800, 600, 300. What's our, what's our goal? Minimize cost. Minimize cost. How do we compute the cost? It's the sum product of the modernized column. Sum product. We are never going to be done with that. The cost with whether or not, because we only incur the cost if it is modernized. And how much do we want for engine blocks? 900,000. How much do we want for transmissions? 900,000. We can do the same thing here. We can do the sum product of the number of engine blocks with whether or not we're doing that update. And we can do the number of transmissions times here. So why did I compute those values? They have to equal 900, at least. At least. So we want those values that we just computed right here to be at least the values that we required from. And our objective cell is here, and we want to maximize it, right? Minimize it. Oh, yeah, sorry. I was thinking profit. Oh, yeah, I'd be a great CEO. <laughs>